the full name of it is P Personal Identity Verification Interoperable First Responder Authentication Credential Technology Transition Workgroup, PIV I slash FRAC slash TTWG. We call it TTWG for short. And it has membership from Honolulu, Hawaii, uh, from Colorado, from Strack, San Antonio, Texas, from Rhode Island, uh, from Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia, uh, West Virginia, uh, just to name a few. Um, and uh, these are my, my stakeholders at the, at the state local levels who are actually implementing uh, GSA approved FIPS 201 PIVI credentials for the routine and emergency use cases. Uh, for the state local governments, I, I recommend it to them that they start off with emergency access and they migrate their strategy to physical and logical access because this is a, it's an investment strategy. Having said that, uh, we have uh, just had a panel yesterday, the Smart Card Alliance, wherein I had uh, a representative from the Commonwealth of Virginia. I had a representative from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Chester County, Philadelphia, Uasia region. I had a representative from North of Grumman. Uh, Virginia talked about that they're issuing up to 13,000 credentials. Uh, Chester County, Pennsylvania is issuing up to 50,000 credentials in the Philadelphia, Uasia region. Uh, North of Grumman has already issued over 100,000 credentials. I'm also working with uh, stakeholders like my, my constituents in West Virginia who are going to start issuing 5,000 up to about 50,000. But the, the end state for West Virginia, for example, is to issue to 1.8 million citizens to make it a citizen's benefit credential. The first thing I had to do is get buy-in because we're talking about stakeholders who are practitioners and they had to understand the value added what this piece of plastic can do for them. So you take a step back, you take a firefighter, a fire chief, uh, they have limited, uh, limited income uh, with competing agendas. So the question is, do I buy a new fire truck? Do I buy tires from a fire truck? Or do I buy a piece of plastic that has an identity credential, that that's an identity component, when I have a piece of plastic that costs 49 cents? Why am I doing this? So we had to convince them that uh, because the federal government in, the, in times of a disaster uh, usually is going to come into their jurisdictions. When the federal government shows up, they will have a federal PIV credential with them. Uh, also, when you look at your National Guard in your state, you already have penetration called the DOD Common Access Card. So all the governors who have National Guard in their states already have penetration in their states. So I had to show them the value add of a PIVI credential that, that the federal government, if it's GSA approved, will trust uh, to go into federal facilities and disaster response sites. Uh, once they understood that, then they understood that maybe we can achieve interoperability. So the, the hard part was to convince them that this piece of plastic is worth the while uh, for rapid insertion of the response recovery forces to put them to work. Case in point is uh, we had one state who sent medical professionals to Katrina and it took up to 72 hours to insert them into the response recovery force because they had to validate that they were true medical professionals. The PIVI credential gives you the ability to do rapid insertion in less than 15 to 30 seconds by validating that someone is who they say they are and they, sent, they were sent there to do their, what they were sent there to do. So once I showed them that process and got their buy-in or at least their attention, the question was, what else can this do for me? So you take the San Antonio, uh, Southwest Texas for trauma region. Uh, their biggest input was their medical professionals um, had about anywhere from 20 to 30 different parking lot uh, credentials to get into different parking lots. And uh, my, my, uh, my TTWG member from STRAC, uh, Eric Epley, uh, in fact, uh, we talked back in 2004, 2005, he said, Craig, he says, how do I get their buy-in? I said, if you can link all these parking lots to just one credential, I said, it'll get their attention. It took him three years to do that, but he did that. So then the question was, from these medical professionals, I got one car to get in my, into these various parking lots. What else can this do for me? He changed the door locks in the hospital for the credential to read. He said, what else can this do for me? He changed his, his computers for them to get on the computers. So they had one credential to get in the parking lot, get in the doors of hospitals, get in operating rooms, and get in their computers. 
So that's an example of a case in point of a real live use case for routine and emergency usage. So we take West Virginia for an example with the citizen's benefit credential. Uh, number one, because you have an identity component that's a biometric based credential, you eliminate or reduce identity fraud. Uh, number two is that can we use this credential and still maintain the same infrastructure in terms of source authorities that exist? The answer is yes. You can all feed into a repository based on identity credential and the cyber attribute of the source authority. So what are we talking about? You can use the credential for officiating gaming licenses or privileges, driving privileges, uh, WIC benefits, uh, as well as uh, to show that somebody is a, is a emergency response official or emergency recovery official. So uh, once they saw that value added, how they could streamline their investment strategies to get rid of all these disparate systems, uh, it got their attention, especially at the, at the leadership level, at the governor's level, and at the regional leadership level. And that's what's happened.